Hello and welcome to Train Simulator uh, 1 Victor 5 0. Uh, today we're sat at Newcastle with the absolutely fantastic uh, and stunningly beautiful HST in uh, Cross Country's livery. We're here with 43285 or 43285 and uh, at the back there 43321. Uh, this is a scenario that I've been working on, um, and I do believe I might have finished. Whoops, we'll just... Uh, sorry, while I'm talking, I shall prep the cab, because we don't have long here. Um, this is a scenario that I've been working on, uh, because I've just learnt how to do scenarios. That's exciting, isn't it? Um, and so I thought, what better than uh, one starring what seems to be everybody's favourite train ever. Um, now, my problem with a lot of the scenarios on the workshop, um, there's, there's just not enough of them, I don't think. Um, a modern day scenario, um, I always tend to use the workshop and think, oh, let's, and I search the workshop for cross country, and then it throws up some American thing, and I think, oh no, I don't want to drive that. Cross country don't run in America, uh, or Arriva cross country certainly don't. Uh, so, anyway. That's that's enough waffling. We're sat here. Uh, there's a there's a 91 here with the rake of Mark IVs. So a 185. First service from Manchester Airport in uh, in platform nine, waiting for something to happen. Uh, the beauty of uh, of my scenarios, and I don't want it to sound like I'm uh, blowing my own trumpet there, but the beauty of my scenarios, if you do like things to be realistic, then I absolutely try 100% to replicate that. So every piece of stock you see on this scenario uh, actually runs at the set time. So there is an 0740 from Newcastle to Plymouth using an HST, which is what we're on now. Uh, we'll just flick outside so you can hear the, the mighty roar of the uh, MTU engine there. And there's some nice little facts about the Class 43 locomotive for you. If you can still hear me talking over the roar of this engine. So if you like your facts, there you go. Some, some technical detail. Anyway, back inside the train where, uh, where the driver is uh, traditionally found. So yes, today we are working the 0740. Uh, we are working this part of the journey, sorry, of the 0606 Edinburgh to Plymouth service. So this train started an hour and 40 minutes ago, an hour and 35 minutes ago, if you want to be uh, more precise, up at Edinburgh Waverley and has come down to uh, Newcastle, where we've now taken it over and we will continue our journey down towards Plymouth. Now this service today will be calling at Durham and Darlington and uh, and then we'll con oh Durham Darlington and York sorry it will then continue on and I do believe let me just have a think where does it go from uh, from York it goes to well it obviously goes all the way down to Plymouth uh, let me think what time we end up. I'm absolutely definitely not on my phone right now researching when this happens. Uh, there we go. Right, so yes, we are on this today. We call at Durham, Darlington, York, Leeds, Wakefield, Westgate, Sheffield, Chesterfield, Derby, Tamworth, Birmingham, New Street, Cheltenham Spa, Bristol Parkway, Bristol Temple Meads, Taunton, Tiverton Parkway, Exeter, St. David's, Newton Abbott, Totnes and Plymouth. Which is a, a fair old journey given that it's now 20 to 8 in the morning or 0742 and this service arrives at its final destination in Plymouth at uh, 1443 so that's about seven well that is exactly seven hours away uh, so obviously one driver doesn't take it all the way through that that would be a little bit absurd wouldn't it um, but yes so you have the absolute pleasure of being on this service with me today from the Newcastle to York leg now if I'm feeling uh, rather excitable then we may actually I may upload a video of the first part of this train, uh, the 0606 Edinburgh to Newcastle section of the journey. I can't say I'm particularly uh, 
knowledgeable about the Edinburgh to Newcastle section of the route. I mean, I'm lucky enough to be a train guard myself, as it happens, uh, and I do actually sign this section of the route from Newcastle to York, um, albeit not with cross-country, but uh, I am lucky enough to sign this part of the route, so I do have a vague idea as to where I am. Uh, and I can give you lots of exciting facts about stations and what goes on at those stations and uh, it's always educational uh, for everybody. But yes, uh, I'm not too knowledge about, knowledgeable about the Edinburgh to Newcastle section of the route. Uh, just trying to think as well what other parts of this route we could perhaps uh, fit in. I mean, there's the western main lines and uh, to be honest, I, I think that's about it. Is Plymouth on train simulator. Another Exeter St David's is. We've got the Riviera line. We've also got the Western Main lines by just trains. We could we could perhaps see some more of this particular train, uh, and I'll even keep the same uh, the same numbers just because that's exciting, isn't it? Um, so yes. Anyway, enough waffling now. So we're we're really picking up speed now, uh, heading southbound the cross-country HST, an absolutely beautiful uh, livery for that iconic engine to wear. And uh, it has to be said, if you haven't gone out and bought the Armstrong Powerhouse Enhancement Pack for this, the MTU pack is your most modern. The Valenta pack is the original, that's the really loud one that all the train, simula uh, all the train enthusiasts get wet about, the Valenta engine, uh, that's the really loud one. Uh, the MTU is the more modern quiet one which comes with your modern liveries and the uh, the VP185 uh, is for some reason these Midlands trains have to be different there so they've got that going on um, so yes uh, but yes today we're using the MTU it really does bring this locomotive to life I mean this is one of the original models in train simulator uh, almost I'd say let's have a think trend of the rail works I would say that this was now 12 years old uh, if not older to be honest this, this specific model you know I have no idea when the first rail works come uh, came out I'm gonna be honest with you I would imagine it was about 12 years ago what are we in now 2018 um, 2008, 10 years ago, 2006, yeah, we're, we're going to say 12 years ago. Um, and, you know, it does look dated when you look on the outside. I mean, the, the headlights, for goodness sake, are, are angular, they're, they're not circular. And especially when you get the likes of Train Sim World with the new Great Western, you really do see what this train simulator uh, railworks model is lacking. But with the MTU enhancement, it, I mean, the cab just looks superb. I mean, you've got all this interactivity and, and that little button there, which I'm pretty sure was in the original, but nevertheless, it's in there in the MTU, and that's exciting. You've got all your switches that you can press, and it's just nice, you know, and, and I'm not a big, and, and, and I'm about to say something that will really upset HST fans now, uh, which tends to be most of the train spotting world train enthusiast world sorry I'm not a big HST fan you know there are a lot of trains out there that I would more happily sit and drive so you are really honored today that I'm doing this recording it for you um, there are quite a lot of trains that I would rather drive um, possibly the most controversial of them all I would probably rather be sitting in the Voyager right now the class 220 <laughs> driving this route I know uh, um, that some some of you viewers have just keeled over at the prospect of me saying such an outrageous and controversial thing. Um, on the East Coast Main Line specifically, I much prefer to drive the 91. I don't know what it is about the 91. I, I just, well, I do know what it is about the 91. It's just fantastic. Uh, the HST compared to the 91 it does look quite dated. I mean, even with the more modern circular headlights, uh, oh, Chesler Street Station. I forgot uh, about that. Not really anything to say about Chesler Street. It's uh, managed by Northern Rail or Arriva Rail North. Oh, speak of the devil, 142. Uh, it sees roughly one Northern service a day, ironically. Uh, the majority of services that stop there are Transpennine Express. They operate in every two-hour service. To my knowledge, there are no Virgin Train services that stop there or East Coast services. Um, and cross-country 
operate one service a day that stops at uh, Chesler Street in each direction. But yes, anyway, back to what I was saying. The Class 91, it has power-operated doors. You know, I know it's historical and it like the first trains had handles and you lent out the window and that's like a, a historical thing. But I always manage to make a hash of it and the staff just look at me like, what are you doing? I'm not a short person in terms of height, but I can never, either the window's stiff and I can't pull it down, or I get the window down and can't quite move the handle on the door low enough for it to unlock and some platform staff has to come and help me and I look a fool, or it's stiff and I get the handle down and just end up stuck on the door, just swinging, completely stuck, and someone has to help me down. So yeah, I'm... I'm not had good experiences with HSTs. Whereas you get the likes of the Class 91 uh, with the Mark 4s where you can just press a button and it just happens and that's exciting and they make a really loud noise. Uh, now the HSTs when they made a loud noise, I, I, that was exciting. But they don't make loud noises anymore unfortunately. Uh, whereas the 91s are still very loud locomotives. There we go. So that, that is the reason. Lost several viewers now at the sheer disgust uh, that I prefer 91s to HSTs. But uh, not that I dislike the HST by any stretch of the imagination. Despite the amount of times it's embarrassed me, uh, I, I just prefer other stuff. This is where we get lots of angry comments in the comments section. Now, if you've not already, scroll down. It'll be a laugh, I'm sure. So anyway, we are now on the horizon, coming into Durham. And we get a nice little AWS uh, magnet there. So what can I tell you about Durham? On the horizon there, you'll see the silhouette of a cathedral against the uh, the morning sky, uh, the sunrise there. Very pretty, very pretty. Um, Durham is famous for its cathedral and a very large viaduct that we accelerate out over uh, and you get a, a fantastic view of the cathedral. If you've not been, go. Lovely day out. Um, it's a university city from what... Uh, I'm, I'm just literally going off, rattling off to you everything I know about Durham. And uh, the station is operated by Virgin Trains East Coast. Now let's have a quick look on the scoreboard there for Durham. So we're due in at 07.43, so we're making good time. Uh, we are currently two minutes early. 07.53, sorry, not 43. Uh, so we're currently two minutes early. So no need to rush, we're just going to glide into the station. Now uh, I, I had actually, this is the second take of this video. Uh, the first time I recorded it we came whizzing into Durham and uh, half the buildings weren't here because uh, I had to turn the scenery down for one reason and another because uh, when there's less scenery the scenario editor likes it a bit more. Uh, but yes, and so we were missing quite a lot of Durham station. Uh, and I thought, that's not good enough for a YouTube video. You know, everyone likes to see what's going on. So anyway, here we are. Let's take a quick look outside. We're in no rush to open the doors. So we'll let the guard just open his local door. There we go. And uh, and one thing, I don't know if the original HST did it there, but the, the doors open kind of randomly. They do all open still. But, uh, you know, they, they just kind of do their own little random thing there. Which is it's subtle, but it's a nice little touch. And then we'll just squeeze through that gap. Careful not to touch the overhead wires. Uh, but yes, so this is Durham. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, we might actually... Wow, we've got some time here. Shall we, uh, shall we get a shot of the HST? and Durham Cathedral. It would be a lot nicer if there weren't those wires in the background. How, how are we going to do this? Nope, this, this isn't happening, is it? Shall we, should we just go with that? Yep. 
There we go, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the thumbnail of this video came to be. Um, and if the thumbnail is different to that picture, that's because I found a better picture uh, during the journey. But what could be better than, uh, than, than that picture? In fact, I tell you what could be better. Let's, uh, let's whiz out here over the viaduct. We, we could totally get, get that in there and like the HST coming over. That's that's quite excited. I, I am excited about that. So now we're just waiting for the the little clock to get to the end there. What time would you out? Fifty four. Very excited here. We're uh, we're making history. Or I don't know if we are actually making history, but it's uh, we're making history in that it's the first time I've ever taken this photograph. Uh, right. So the doors are shut. We'll just give it a few moments. We'll press C twice as if we're responding to the guard's buzzer. I'll just bang it into notch 5 because normally I've got 3 and then 5 just to kind of build the engines up. But we're not there. We can't see what's happening. We just want it to happen as quick as possible. And so we will get rid of that because that spoils the picture and, uh, and just wait for it to happen. Now I'm really hoping there isn't a northbound East Coast service due because East Coast have a habit of waiting for people to take photographs of trains and then sending a, a train in front of it, usually a Mark IV. Here we go. You can hear something about to happen. Here we go. We can see the train coming. A finger hovering over the screenshot button now. I, I was expecting it to be bigger. There we go. And that, there we go, so I lied earlier what I said about the, that, that will probably, one of those will be the screenshot, whichever looks best when I come to edit them later. Uh, but yes, accelerating out of Durham, we're now 22 miles northbound of Darlington, so we're heading south at what can only be described as blistering speeds. Full steam ahead. Uh, so there's a, a little cutting there, just outside Durham. And one thing about the HST that I think could be improved, and that's not, not the model for train simulator. The 91, it's nice that you can stick cruise control on and you can, you can do other things, or speed set, sorry, not cruise control, it's not a Ford Mondeo, is it? Uh, you can you can stick speed set on and then just be kind of looking around and not paying too much attention to the driving aspect of it because it just does it itself. Uh, obviously, you need to be aware of any changes in speed limit, but uh, it's nice that it does it for you. Whereas this, you you have to constantly be on the ball. Scandalous, isn't it? Anyway, I shall uh, I shall shut up now because I'm running out of interesting things to say, um, and I shall leave you to view uh, the stunning countryside and views of the East Coast Main Line, and I shall pop up uh, or chirp in when uh, when I have something to tell you, or if I have any brainwaves and think, oh, I need to say that. So uh, anyway, yes, do and sorry, muted that way too early. Do enjoy and. Uh, I shall catch up with you soon. Literally thought it would take a bit longer than that, but uh, a passing 185, uh, the 0708 Transpennine Express service, so that will be one of those services that calls at Chester Le Street.
I've just literally noticed I've turned the engines off here. We're running at zero RPM. Uh, how how do we turn the engines on? Oh, there we go. Up to speed. That's not good. I'm trying to show off what a professional driver I am. And, and that one's off as well. Trying to show what a professional driver I am here, and we've just switched the engines off mid uh, mid jaunt. Yep. That's not good at all. That's rather embarrassing. There we go. Right. Full steam ahead. We've got uh, got to reach 100 miles an hour. We'll be falling behind time here. We're due in Darlington in 10 minutes. And we do need to make that deadline. It's far too early in the day for things to be running late. Anyway, this here, the level crossing, that's Het Mill level crossing. Uh, the only level crossing on this uh, particular section of line between York and Newcastle or the only car level crossing. Uh, there are quite a few foot crossings dotted up and down, uh, but uh, dotted up and down the East Coast Main Line entirely, to be honest. But uh, that's, that's the only actual automatic half barrier level crossing. Uh, I believe it's an automatic half barrier. It sounds impressive if I say automatic half barrier level crossing, and therefore it is for the purpose of this video. And now I do believe that it's just in front of, uh, of this section where we're at now, where, where the scenery just disappears. Uh, the, the embankment, the ground embankment that we're currently elevated on, just, just disappears. Now I don't know if that's obvious, I must be missing some sort of asset there, uh, which it hasn't told me about. But uh, either that or Network Rail have been working and uh, replacing the ballast and uh, took out the old ballast and forgot to put the new in 
Uh, but yes, any second now, I do believe it is this section of line, or it might be between Darlington and North Allerton. So I could be just talking absolute gibberish right now, but there is a section of line, and I will notify you where it happens. And we do actually need to investigate, because my railworks routes have a history of certain assets being replaced by milk bottles. If you've not watched my tour of the Harrogate line, then please do watch that, because the level crossings all turn into milk bottles. Uh, a very serious issue affecting... Uh, you've heard of cable theft, and now there's theft of level crossings, uh, and in their place, the burglar has left their signature calling card a full milk bottle. Uh, so we do actually need to investigate this, uh, because that's something which could become apparent, and uh, I might need to go out and buy some more routes because that's a good business plan of Dovetail Games. Um, make sure that, that everything ever needs everything else. So if you buy one route, you need to have another route, and another route, and another route. And oh, there's a Voyager. Has to be said, when it passed there, it only sounded like it was running on one engine didn't sound healthy, it has to be said. So now, finally, the speed limit of 125 is on the horizon. We've not actually got up to 125 yet. Uh, 115 being our highest speed so far. So I'm almost looking forward to the section south of Darlington, where we can really open it up. Now, uh, obviously, we're at the 125 board now. Uh, we're just about to increase. There we go, 125. Um, but the problem is, is that... I don't think we're actually going to get to 125 miles an hour between here and Darlington. Given that we need to increase by 30 miles an hour in a mile, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, the HST doesn't accelerate that fast. If it does happen, way, nice surprise, but uh, I just highly doubt that it's going to happen. I mean, we're already coming up on a flashing yellow there. You know what? We'd, we'd best knock it off, haven't we? There we go, let's, uh, let's just pop that in notch three. So our next signal aspect that we're expecting is a single flash in yellow. Now the reason for that, if you're not clued up on your signals, is because we're actually coming off the main line uh, into Darlington Station, as you will soon see. The main line continues southbound, and uh, we, well, continues through Darlington Station, but, but it avoids Darlington. It's hard to explain. Basically, Darlington, we have to turn off to get into the station, and the main lines don't actually have platforms on them. That's why we come off the main line. Uh, so now that we've passed a single flash in yellow, our next signal could literally be anything. Uh, so we do need to slow down as if we're expecting a red. 
which I really do hope it's not a red because we don't like sitting and waiting at all but uh, yes we need to treat it as if it is and uh, there's there's some red thing in the distance here which looks like an HST it is an HST good morning and that must be an Aberdeen service if I'm not very much mistaken the 0707 no 0710 Leeds service uh, which is uh, uh, no from Leeds sorry 0710 out of Leeds which goes up to Aberdeen so I can see that that's a yellow signal in the distance so if we can begin accelerating again we perhaps slowed down a little bit prematurely there but I really didn't want to fly through the signal and spat because that would be embarrassing and uh, not at all what you'd expect from my sheer professionalism uh, when driving a train so a line from Bishop Auckland coming round from the right there joining us and uh, some sidings on the left uh, you tend to find that they, they have freight things in them So we don't come across this one. We come across on the next, the next kind of little little bit over. Why am I slowing down even more? You've, you're under 40 now. What time are we actually due into Darlington? Oh, arrive at 8:11. So despite the fact I slowed down ridiculously uh, earlier, we're still arriving early. And uh, we'll just bob the brakes on there. So yes, this is Darlington Station. You can see what I mean, that we had to turn off the main line. Uh, an absolutely beautiful station, it has to be said. I really like Darlington Station. Um, it kind of almost is a shadow of its former self, I would say. Um, you know, it's such a beautiful station, but there's only four platforms. And I just think it's such a shame you know there's not it almost seems when you look at it and I don't know my history I'm not from around this area but it almost seems like there was so much going off at one point and and now it's just not it's it's almost like a ghost station uh, so anyway here we are at Darlington we'll get the doors open and uh, let's let's have a look around while we're here shall we so yes, when we, when you look, you see the main line comes down here for any services that don't actually go into the station. And and I imagine Darlington Station at one point as maybe expanding over here, you know, and, and spanning the hole and, and the fast lines. You know, I, I can just see that. Whether it did or not, I don't know. As I say, my history of this area is not particularly strong. Uh, now, there is talk that they're actually going to knock this down and move it onto the main line, which uh, which will be a real shame uh, if they do decide to do that. I can't remember where I heard that they were going to do that um, and how true it is, but if it is true, it, it is a big shame. It really is. Because it's such a beautiful station. Whoops, crashed into the chairs. Virgin still forgotten to update the uh, the, the posters here. Hmm. I remember that advert. They use a model railway one with the wrong headlights. Yes. Lovely. Right, anyway, almost time for departure once again. So into the cab and uh, await things to happen. Doors are shut. Toot toot to you, sir. And off we go. So now, our next station is York. Uh, we don't stop at North Allerton or Thursk. We're straight through. And uh, and yes, that bit with the missing scenery must be, must be down here. So anyway, full steam ahead. We turn the M on the signal there is for main line. Uh, if you get a B, that means you're off down the branch. Or, of course, Borough, which, uh, as, as it's easier to do the acronym, M for Mainline, B for Borough, because you actually go off towards Middlesbrough, uh, which you will soon see happen in just a moment. So this route, the DP Simulations version, 
of the uh, East Coast Main Line, Newcastle to York North East, uh, is a modified version of this line. It does require the Newcastle York Modern, so there you go, just on the left there, that single track goes off towards Dinsdale, Allens West and Middlesbrough. Uh, this is the modified version, so if you look on track plan, centre our player, here we are. Uh, you do actually have access to those stations, Dinsdale, Teesside Airport, Allens West, which then joins the uh, the Yarm line, Thornaby, Middlesbrough up here, uh, and then actually goes, oh yeah, there's Middlesbrough, goes all the way to South Bank, British Steel, Redka, Redka Central, I didn't know it had the Redka Central section and Redka East. Uh, and Yarm and that, so it's, it's worth worth investigating and uh, of course south of York, which we won't be visiting today, but you do go down to Colton Junction, Church Fenton here, Micklefield and Garforth, which I believe I've, uh, I've covered. Just make sure we've not passed any other trains, because it's always exciting when you see other trains. Nope, not passed anything. So keep a look out there, folks. Uh, but yes, it's always exciting to cover new sections of track. I mean, especially considering I'm from the West Yorkshire area and we have been suitably deprived of, uh, of any routes ever in Train Simulator. Um, the closest that we've got now is the Harrogate York Loop, uh, which does actually touch Leeds, which is exciting. But I mean, for making scenarios, there's, there's not a, a, a proper version. We're waiting for Master Keys 185 to come out. And, uh, and then we'll be able to make more scenarios around that, which is very exciting, very exciting. Anyway, again, this is a particularly blank section of the route now until North Allerton, so I shall uh, hush and go pop the kettle on, and I shall uh, be with you again very shortly. I'm joking about popping the kettle on, by the way. I'm maintaining accurate concentration. Uh, so yes, I shall see you in a bit. So we'll just switch the headlights to daytime there. I'm sure we've got enough visibility now, uh, really starting to lighten up. And, uh, and yeah, so just seeing really what we can get out of the HST. We should be definitely by North Allerton up at 125 miles an hour. I'd be very disappointed if we weren't. And uh, of course, if we do start to hit yellow signals further down, although from what I've uh, kind of looked, and the fact that I made the scenario, so I know exactly what's in front of us, um, we shouldn't catch it up at all, which is exciting stuff. Although we are fast approaching the section of the route with no floor, uh, which is, is embarrassing. Although I am intrigued to see if milk bottles have appeared in its place.
And there we have it, ladies and gents. We are now up at 125 miles an hour, and the floor has disappeared. There we go. We'll uh, we'll just see that go over, and and look that there is no floor. There is no floor, and there are no milk bottles either. So it's obviously not the same crazy person that stole our level crossings. But yes, it goes on for quite a while, as you can see. It's still going on. Uh, they are not attached. We are just floating. And then it just comes back all of a sudden. And I don't know if I'm missing a specific asset, uh, but but that must be why, because the floor has, has just disappeared. Anyway, that's a, that's a lot of excitement, isn't it? And I don't think that that happens again now all the way to York, which is nice. It's always a stressful period when the floor just disappears out from underneath you. And uh, if I'm not too mistaken, we're not all that far from North Allerton. You can see a little bit of civilization just on the hill there to your left, which uh, is wonderful. We should also see a couple more 185s on the northbound. Uh, the 808 Transpennine from York to Newcastle, we should pass that. Uh, should just be passing Thursk about now, northbound, and then of course there's the Middlesbrough service, which is, uh, well, four minutes out of York. Uh, and they are all actually running on time today, I've set them all to be on time. There are no dramas in this scenario. And uh, yes, the siding on the right-hand side, uh, which I believe is Castlefields or Castle Hill, it's it's Castle something, there's a castle involved, um, indicate that we're just north of North Allerton. North of North Allerton. Uh, but yes, there is another junction as well, North Allerton High Junction, of which we will see very shortly. There we go, there's the fly under. North Allerton High Junction, where you come from Middlesbrough, North Allerton Station, and some sidings. This is North Allerton Platform. One of what is quite possibly one of the longest platforms in the world. It just seems to go on forever. I mean, when you're stood at the back of your train trying to dispatch on a foggy day, sometimes you can't even see the front of your train, and you certainly can't see the signal on the end of the platform in the distance. Of course, in saying that, that is just an expression. I am aware that North Allerton is not the longest station in the world, uh, because I can imagine somebody's getting uh, quite cross now and it banging in longest station in the world into Google Answers to uh, to copy and paste it in the comments. So please, please don't do that. I'm aware it's the probably longest stations, but it feels like a long station. Oh, whistle board. What are we whistling for? Ah, one of those many foot crossings uh, which I mentioned earlier. And uh, and this section of track between North Allerton and York has to be one of the most boring sections in the world. It's just four tracks and there's nothing to see. And it's just a straight line. There's no houses, there's no people. It's just a very desolate landscape. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, this is this is a stereotypical uh, image of what southerners think the north is like. Just, I mean, actually, no, that's a lie because there's overhead wires over the tracks, and southerners don't think that we even have electricity in the north. Uh, but this this barren landscape of not very much is just what southerners must think we're all about up here. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's a pretty good good summing up is that if you ask me
So there is the Newcastle service just passing us, class 185. Uh, now that's the 0808 Newcastle that stops at uh, North Allerton. Or it, it actually, I do believe, let's have a think, the 808, so that will be the 0721. I believe that's the 0612 off Lime Street. I believe that that starts its journey at Liverpool. Uh, goes via Victoria, uh, Manchester Victoria, Huddersfield, Leeds, York, North Allerton, Darling and Durham and Newcastle. Very exciting. And that might stop at Chesterfield Street as well with it being peak time. But uh, don't quote me on that one. And uh, the previously mentioned Middlesbrough service just passing us there, uh, which will have been the 0815. And I can only apologise, I probably wasn't paying attention when we were when we went flying through Thursk because we must have already done that. Because the Middlesbrough doesn't arrive in Thursk until 30 minutes past, so apologies there. Uh, but Thursk station, which is back there somewhere, uh, two platforms basically, two fast lines as you'll have seen when we went flying through. And uh, Thursk is a Transpennine Express managed station, as is North Allerton, which I didn't mention either. Sorry, the facts are slipping, ladies and gents. Uh, but yes, Thursk uh, is served by Transpennine Express, the Middlesbrough services with the odd Newcastle. Uh, I believe one Newcastle service a day stops at Thursk. Um, although maybe some of the last Newcastles uh, in a northbound direction do. Uh, but yes, one northbound a day that I'm aware of, the 0708 out of York to Newcastle. Uh, and other than that, it's just the Middlesbroughs. And then there's a few cheeky Grand Central services thrown in there. So HSTs did actually used to stop at Thursk. Now, sadly, that's, uh, that is a no more, as Grand Central only operate class 180s throughout their entire fleet or they do when this video was recorded uh, so it's a sad day that the HST doesn't stop at Thursk anymore although to be honest with you I think Virgin might stop one one a day 
Uh, I have seen an HST stopped at Thirsk. Um, so, so that might happen as well. But, but yeah. Yes, um, I, I have seen, as I've been coming southbound on my Transpennine, I have seen an East Coast service going north stopped at first. Cause I, think, I think maybe it's a thing, it's just a very rare thing. And, uh, and that was an HST. Northbound Voyager there also sounded like it's only running on one engine. I tell you, cross country's fleet today, it's, it's lucky that we're in the HST that we're in, because uh, we've got a full two engines running. Because the Voyager fleet doesn't sound to be, uh, to, to be doing too well at all, it has to be said.
Anyway, we best start slowing down. I can see a yellow signal in the distance uh, because we are now approaching York. I mean, we're still two and a half miles, just less than out of York, but nevertheless, we best start slowing down because I don't want to end up speeding through the station. I don't honestly know if that's ever happened before that a driver has forgot to stop at York, but, uh, but we best start slowing down just in case because we're hitting the yellow signals. I believe we're actually going to get stopped just outside York uh, because of the 0835 East Coast service coming off Platform 9 and that's the platform we're going into. So uh, I would imagine that we're going to end up getting stopped for that soon as we are technically still running really early. Uh, but yes, so anyway, let's focus on not overshooting that red signal and having a crash. Now, as I say, this next signal now should be a red, if I'm not too much mistaken. And uh, as soon as we see that little flicker of red and that East Coast service powering past us, then uh, we should be good to go. Yeah, there we go, red signal on the horizon. And, uh, and is the East Coast service coming? I wonder... I can't see any... Ah, there we go. Yeah, I can just see a little bit of red on the horizon. Uh, that is not the signal. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we'll just cruise now uh, at about... We'll say 15... Ah, there we go. The signal has gone uh, yellow already. Hear the roar of the Class 91 power in northbound. Puts our HST to shame, really, doesn't it? Uh, it's a good job that notification came up in the corner. We'd be having a, a rather quick stop there. And uh, always daunting, this red signal coming around the corner. I always think, ah, but then remember that that's not for us. Uh, that's for the depot. Uh, so yes, we should go over now. And uh, yes, we're shortly arriving into the city of York. And that is as far as we're going today. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Uh, and do hope, of course, that you have enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, and I hope you, you thought that I could make a pretty half-decent scenario. Uh, you know, with, with lots of things happening. Uh, because that's what we like in a scenario, really, isn't it? Lots to see, lots to look at. I mean, it has to be said, when uh, when arriving at York on the real-time trains, there was literally nothing in the station um, while that's stopping there. We'll see through the wall. Oh, there's a Class 150 there. And uh, I did set the 158 over there for the 0827 hull. Uh, whoops, we've... Ah, where are we doing? Uh, yes, just in case we arrived exceedingly early. But that appears to have already departed. And there's a there's a Manchester Airport service that comes in and terminates on 11 uh, if you're running late. But yes, I hope you think that I can make a pretty half-decent scenario. I mean, uh, everything seemed to work today, so that's always good. Thank you for watching. In the top left-hand corner, there is a subscribe button. There's a few other videos and bits and pieces on the right. Check them out. You might like them. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe. And I shall see you next time. Goodbye for now.